All right, all right, we're back with the Outer Worlds. Let's go take Ellie home to see you her know parents. You were with the rather filthy plumber. I thought we had auto mechs for that sort of thing. Wait, no. Oh, that's because I didn't equip the quest. Uh, no, that's not it. Wait, is it called the Last Crusade? The Low Crusade. Okay. All right, so our family is this way. I'll keep it down. I just stole like five bucks from a box. <laughs> How do I? Where exactly is it on the I other side? Is there a bridge or something? Miss Ellie, er, uh, Dr. Finhill, I noticed your pistol's been making a funny noise. What are you talking about? I oil it every night. Well, look here. Your slide's not recoiling fully. You might be due for a new spring. I could take a look, maybe fix it for you. Uh, sure. I'm short on bits at the moment, but I'll pay you back. Is it me, or could each of these homes fit all of Edgewater inside? Yeah, most of it. Most of it, at least. There's my parents' place. Smell that? Industrial grade cleaning solvent and desperation. <laughs> and desperation. Okay. Well, inside we go. Okay. Well, hello. Knock, knock. Marilyn, is that you? Laws, oh, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, thanks for welcome me, welcoming me into your home. Hello. Spit on the fucking floor. Oh my god. Fancy place probably. Uh, be taking a few things with me. Ellie, let's do this another time. I don't know what to say. She's usually not like this. Come on, you're supposed to help me make an impression. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? I mean, we have kill killed quite a few people. Theft, vandalism, profanity, <laughs> you name it. <laughs> Are you trying to make me look bad? Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, they clearly don't care. You should go. I mean, we had other business in Byzantium, so it's not like we went out of our way. But you can't just kick us out. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. Oh god. Uh shit. God damn it. It's the floors. You had the floors redone with real Terran marble? Since when can you afford that? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. They collected her life insurance policy. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. I mean, that point makes sense. If you just left and never called again, they're probably going to think you're dead. Um, 
We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. What? We collected on your life insurance policy. Fucking knew it! And the payouts have been rather, uh, substantial. You what? But I'm sure you're much happier now knowing that, uh... What vulgar company you keep, Marilyn? Well, now that I'm here, I guess you'll just have to report back that I'm very much alive and kicking. It's not that simple. For one thing, we'd have to cut back on so many... necessities. The neighbors would be sure to notice. And who cares? That's the other problem. We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd you'd run off to become a a miscreant, could we? Shh. Someone could hear you. A professional we miscreant. We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of twelve-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Really? Not until I get some answers. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to, uh, leave. Can I kill them? Quietly, if you don't mind. You know quiet is not in her vocabulary. Hmm. She hasn't changed a bit, I see. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn... Please. Don't cause a scene. I don't know about you, Ellie, but I'm ready to cause a scene. Let's just get out of here, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Jesus Christ. All right, well, I'm about to... Okay, there's nothing there. Can't open that. I can't open any of these doors? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. No! Don't hurt me! Oh dear lord. you do oof <laughs> okay back we go I really just wanted to see what would happen she got oof okay well can I take this at least what do you think you're doing Let's talk outside. All right. Didn't want me to kill your parents, I get it. Captain, got a minute? Of course I do. Can you believe those two? No, actually. We'd hardly been there a minute and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. Uh, they shouldn't have gotten, gotten so upset. How did you think it would go? You were making quite the scene. 
I thought they'd be scandalized. They'd both be sitting there watching one of their vapid Aetherwave dramas, and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider, and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. And then what? That's very, that's a very specific fantasy. You've watched too many damn movies. I'd have a great one-liner in the tube. I was thinking either the leather's fake, but the scars are real or, oops, did I just track awesome onto your rug? How about it's payback time and I'm collecting with interest. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna use that one day. Oh, I'm so mad! <laughs> now, getting back to my story. Father would throw his hands up, because this would be just like me, to come back and make a big scene. Then, Mother would do the old, You had us worried sick. Her eyes would be red, and she'd have her fist in front of her mouth to stifle a sob. Hey, chin up. You're better than this? Uh, you're really hurt, aren't you? Don't get all mopey, Art. I'm not hurt. I'm outraged. Affronted, even. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. A reputation for what? Uh, work through... No. Uh, trust me, this was just for the best. That sounds familiar. I'd love to know how you'd describe getting kneecapped. Think, I think there's a lesson here, Ellie. Uh, what happened with your parents is in the past, now move on. This episode reflects on them, not you. But I want to talk about me now. Uh, you can learn something from this. Uh, it's up to you to determine what it is. Everyone's only out for themselves. Uh, you've got to surround yourself with people who really look out for you. Unless you mean the kind who look out for you to blink so they could swipe your bits. The galaxy's not exactly crawling with those. Well, you found anyway, quite a Anyway, I don't want to sift through this lousy experience for meaningful life lessons. I'm mad, and I want to do something about it. Something like... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? There you go. Let's do it. Keep talking. First answer. Uh. Wanna bet? I've got some big appetites, and they're all cheap. Uh, you have a plan in mind? I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing, and I'll get to cut them off. Great, you're cut out for Wall Street. <laughs> Quite the role reversal. So how do we do this? There better be a cut in it for me. As long as I don't develop a taste for Wolgonzola and bad legal dramas, that's fine by me. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Okay. Something on your mind? All right, let's go rob some millionaires. You take or real good care of your pistol, Doctor. Knowing, Sam. knowing sci-fi. I oughta. Billionaires. Life this long. I mean, you treat it nice. Makes me happy to see, cause I feel the same way about my wrench. Look, it's a tool that does a job. Feelings got nothing to do with it. Why you gotta be so mean to people, Ellie? You sure have seen a lot of the colony, huh, Doctor Fenhill? Ellie. And sure, but most of it looks the same from inside a ship. Sorry, Dr. Ellie. Still, though, don't you find it thrilling, being in space? Look, it's just Ellie. 
God, she's so fucking precious. Oh my God. So sweet, I can't take it. I've got diabetes because of it. I do not have diabetes, but you know, still. I guess we're going to Fallbrook. Fallbrook, huh? Okay, well, you know what? You get to run around with Nioka. How the hell did I? A new ship. Doesn't look like any of the corporate freighters. It's because it's mine. But what would they be doing here? And how did they ever get permission to land? That's none of your goddamn business, Perhaps lady. We'll finally get some excitement after all. Maybe. If I don't kill you. Hmm? Yeah. You know what? Since we're going out, let's just go to go to um Groundbreaker. And give Provadi her day. Oh my God. All right, here we go. All right, let's go to the Groundbreaker, which is right here. We've arrived at the groundbreaker. Alright. She's on her way. How do I look? You look terrific. Cleaner, maybe. Oh. My hands have finally stopped shaking. Alright, alright. Deep breath. Here I go. Oh my god. Look at that. Where is the actual mission? Can they see me? Anyhow, so I told him, Dad, I'm a big girl now. I ain't need your help. I can do it on my lonesome. What did he say to that? Have at it then. And he handed me his favorite wrench, the one he used for the canner. He was probably half as tall as I was. He didn't scold you for talking back to him? Nah, he was never like that. I always thought it was funny when I get indignant about something. <laughs> and he'd watch me do whatever it was, make sure I didn't get hurt, but he'd never interfere. I learned a lot that way. I wish I could have met him. Anyone who helped shape you must have been a special person. This is incredibly creepy, but... <laughs> My father and I were often at loggerheads. He had notions of how the station should be run, and I had others. He was fond of saying, you think Groundbreaker pays for itself? Someone's gotta cover the bills, when I chafed against his deference to the board. Sounds like he was afraid of him. He was, and he was right to be. Didn't mean I had to like it. Where's everybody else? Oh, there's Nioka. All right, let's give them some time. <laughs> oh, but first, let me let me do this. And Right, 
So let's go. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? Headshot kills explode dam. Ooh. Everybody's revering. The board's agreeable. Mm. Neutral. Oh, the Borst factory. Yeah, because it's uh, it's kind of just like not in that company's hands anymore. Remember that you are not insured. You don't need to keep reminding me of that. go right back inside okay hey Ellie how you actually something on your mind you sure you're feeling all right I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination not much else to know captain I like long walk yeah yeah I know okay so nothing no really nothing really you want to talk about now okay Oh, that's right, and we can also just keep the same team that we've got equipped now, because we gotta go to Vaultbrook. Didn't I request no more fertilizer shipments be brought on board? Who keeps ordering these? I... I who the fuck? <laughs> and this isn't fertilizer, these are cows! This is the second time that there's been cows in my cargo hold. Okay, Captain, she's gone. Oh no. I'm sure I'm sure something broke while you were busy. <laughs> no. I feel like running laps around the cargo bay. So she got here, and the first thing she said was, Oh, you smell nice, like mock apples. And I was like, Yeah, new soap. And then she just sort of touched my arm real gentle like and called the cut of my outfit elegant. I couldn't hear the rest on account of my heart was beating so hard. Then I led her into the kitchen. I think she about cried when she saw the spread. Oh, figured you'd do, uh, do this someplace more romantic like the engine room. <laughs> so you laid out the meal, brought Jun Lee in, uh, uh, Jun in, started music. I know I was there. <laughs> no, I'm not. Why would I ever say that? She stood stock still and just said, Oh, real soft. Oh, and let me tell you, I was sweating. And then she blinked and said, Is that dustback casserole? I told her how we got Mr. Raymond to bake it for us, so it was double authentic. Made by a real live monar monarchian? Monarchist? Monarch person. So the meal went well, and uh, the dessert too? Wasn't sure about that guy, but I'm glad it was, it was good. Okay. Well, we talked a bunch over dinner about the things we learned just through messages, stuff we repaired, how I taught her to salvage, and she taught me to build. When I brung out the sweetheart cakes, June, she got a little teary, said she had a thing she needed to say. But I stopped her because I wanted to say it first. I never felt so bold, Captain. Oh, Smooth. One of us has got to be. We're both... June's so reserved, and I'm so shy. I, I worried if I never said anything, nothing would ever get said, you know? I told her about how she made me feel. Bold like I acted. Strong. Smarter and kinder than I am on my lonesome. I listed all the things I liked about her. And then she pulled out a paper and read a speech. She, she talked about the things she admired about me, like my cleverness and my humor, and how it made her want to be more open. What happened next? Don't leave me in suspense. Wait, she wrote a speech to declare love? Oh my god. Anyhow, when she wrapped up, I asked her to be my girlfriend. And Captain, she said yes! Aw, oh, damn. It's all on your account, you know. Imagine if you'd never taken me out of Edgewater. I'd have never met Junlei at all. 
I don't know nothing about the Vicar's capital P plan, but you've sure changed my life. So, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna head to my cabin and happy screaming to my pillow for like an hour. That's entirely fine. That's really fine. I I'm gonna let you do that. I'm gonna leave you on the ship. I got a picture of Pravati and June Lei. Is it like in my cabin or something? Huh. Is it like in inventory or? That's cute. That's cute. Oh my god. How is everybody? Something on your mind? Nope. Okay. No. Bye. All right. Let's. Why does he always say it twice? Is that like a quirk of the machinery? Oh, he's just taking inventory. Alright, let's go to... Fallbrook is on Monarch. We're now in orbit above Fallbrook, Captain. Good to know. Let's with this one. Let's do that. Remember that you are Ellie and Neoka. Good. Are not insured. All right. Where they at? Back behind me. So we're going somewhere over here. This looks like the place. You ready to get my money or what? Yeah. Oh, and since we're here, we can uh, buy some armor. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group, Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. Duly noted. Dullness of mind? What does that mean? Some people, but no one in this office, I assure you, might call it stupidity. Oh! It's like they say, there's no cure for that. No, there is not. So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. Why is your office on Monarch? We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Oh, it's certainly not about what I say. That's all down to our legal team and our CFO. Mm-hmm. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. Yeah. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. Let's stay on topic. Uh, I want to change your beneficiary. What else can you tell me? Are you serious? Well, we interviewed the parents extensively. They had plenty of awkward childhood stories that illustrated their daughter's clumsiness and capriciousness. Hey, those are entirely made up. Furthermore, the claim spurred a whole line of fashion-related policies. It's become a very lucrative market. Oh, dear lord. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. 
Okay, but how would I change it? Of course she is. The paperwork says so. I like to think she's dead in spirit, but technically, legally, and regretfully, I'm still Marilyn Fanhill. Ah! That's impossible. By all accounts, she was an elegant and classy woman with impossibly fine bone structure. That couldn't possibly be you. Ooh. That's gotta be the nicest thing anyone said to me in a long while. Don't you have a picture of her? Oh, you mean hypothetically. Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd theoretically add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. I think you have something in your eye. Perhaps I can interest you in our ocular abnormality coverage. Please. My policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Damn. Very well. I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. Well, that is her name. Plenty. As my boss likes to say, there's a policy for every situation and an exclusion for every policy. We've insured unusually expressive eyebrows, outrageous statements, disastrous marriages. Disastrous marriages? How, okay, how the fuck do you insure eyebrows? Usually character actors or corporate execs with menacing stares. Speaking of actors, you're a dead ringer for the new Odeon picture star. You must get that all the time. No, that actually was me. <laughs> That policy is almost exclusively for our corporate clientele. In the unlikely event they make a claim about a product that turns out to be less than accurate, they need some kind of protection against the damage to their sales and reputation. So it's just basically protection against fraud damages. Those are mostly for top rungers in Byzantium who have a lot of social and financial capital wrapped up in their marriage contracts. There's one for your beloved eloping with your sibling. Your beloved eloping with their sibling, scandalous rumors forcing you apart, the revelation of a secret love child. We try to cover every possible hazard to domestic bliss. I have no more questions. One thing's for sure. You won't find better policy protection against sudden lunar implosions anywhere in Halcyon. Goodbye. We got it. That's horrific. You really did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. If that's all you wanted, you could have just uh, stayed in Byzantium. Being a surgeon out there isn't as great as it seems. At least half your day is paperwork and red tape. No amount of money is worth dealing with that. I'm just glad my folks aren't going to live off that awful story they made up. <laughs> Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Cut to the chase, Sally. Uh, what are you gonna do with all those bits? Good for you. I'm glad you got what you wanted. As high-minded as ever, I see real jobs. Maybe as line holders or warm bodies. Whatever that means. Oh sure, you've got to wait in line for just about anything in Byzantium, and not everyone has the time or inclination to do it themselves. As for warm bodies, some companies like to keep extra workers on site to look more productive. To just be there. Oh no, there's lots of paper shuffling and pen clicking that goes on. The really good ones know how to leave sticky notes in just the right places. That sounds incredibly See, this boring. is why I had to get out of Byzantium. Not sure what comes next for me though. I've never been much of a planner. Better to figure things out as you go. You gotta plan ahead at some point. You talk like someone who likes lists. No, not really. Maybe you haven't noticed, but you can't even count on a bribe making it into the right pocket. What's the point of planning for anything around here? Hate to say it, but Halcyon's already there. 
Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Appreciate it, but I, uh, I didn't do this for the money. Don't make it weird. Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? Oh, I've done quite a bit of things for the money, but I didn't do this for the money. Are you sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. I'm a doer, or not a talker, just leave it at that. Friendship is more important. Uh, what else are we fighting for if not for the people we care about? You don't have to get all mushy about it. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day they watch yours. Exactly. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. All right, uh... Damn it! Don't mention it. Really, this feels weird enough as it is. <laughs> Let's go. Wait, which way is the way out? Today? Doesn't really matter. Let's go do this. Just got one last companion mission, and then we'll be all good. Unless, of course, like, whenever we eventually do Peril and Gorg on Gorgon, it gives you a new companion. I don't know. I hope so. I like companions. <laughs> Alright, so... Where exactly... Are we going? How do we get there? Why? Well, near Hostiles, of course. Thanks. Oh! Oh, shit. Oh my god. Okay, that is horrific, Neil. Okay, calm down. I forgot how incredibly dangerous this planet was. You know what? I'm gonna put Nioka. in that. Since it just helps her. Here it is. Here we go. I haven't set foot in here since. Well, I'm ready. Yeah, right? Yeah. <sighs> okay. That's done.
Search the hive for the remains of Nyoka's friends. Anything else? No? Well, this is the spot. You know, I thought I'd be angry. I thought I'd storm in here in a rage and exterminate all these bugs and everything would be all right in the end. But I ain't. I'm mostly just empty. A little sad, maybe. The first night Hayes and I spent in here, we knew it was home. It's safe. It's got a nice chill to it. But mostly, it doesn't stink of sulfur. Hmm. Monarch folks often joke about it. Not because of the smell or the grittiness it leaves in your throat. Not because of the headaches or the coughing. It's because there's no escaping it. It's life here, and there ain't anything you can do about it. But here, somehow the sulfur never made it. The nights we spent in here felt like vacations. So we started building. built the space we hauled in steel hired sublight folk to help that's how we met anders and opal they stuck around after our contract was up opal liked camping anders liked chasing her tail four of us for a while scraping together what bits we could to build our home then came rebecca a sawbones out of the cascadia survivors who took a kindness to Hayes. and Clara, her little sister. I'll admit I wasn't keen on taking her on at first, but for a teenager, she was surprisingly capable. More like attached at the hip to her older sister. Got a kind of strength between them, I suppose. She had a head for numbers, helped us trade hides for food and materials, negotiated contracts, turned out to be mighty useful. Clara, Hayes, Anders, Rebecca, Opal, and me. Six folks, one name, one family, Charon. Despite Monarch trying to kill us day in and day out, we managed to belong. Sorry they aren't here to see us kick Mad, uh, Mata ass. Uh, let, uh... Tell you what don't belong, bugs. Let's clear them out. Me too, Captain. But I'm starting to think that maybe I found another. Now let's get to shooting before I get all sentimental. Their mistake. All right. God damn it. Just give me some cover. I am a Oh no 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 no. There we go. Keeping it nice and small. Oh no. Alright, almost just a little bit past half health.
wish these were more auspicious circumstances, but at least we're all here. Yeah. This bringing them together, burying them. This is the kind of thing Hayes would have done. That makes it stupid. By all accounts, we should have left well enough alone, but that also makes it right. Captain, thank you. Not a problem. You mind if we rest a spell before we head out? I'd, I'd like to bury Opal and Clara proper before I lay everyone's medallions to rest. Uh, you're leaving the medallions here? Suppose that's wise, go ahead. Of course, though, I thought you should hold on to the medallions. What? Why? That's painful memories, Captain. Though, I hope remind you of both the good and the bad. They like, they like to be remembered once in a while, uh, even the ones that hurt. Huh, that's, that ain't a bad point. All right, Captain. Thanks. How do you feel? You know, I've been assuming this entire stay on your ship thing isn't a permanent arrangement. Part of my contract? That said, you ain't been eaten or shot to death yet. Says a lot about the stability of your future. And to hey. be honest, I'm about sick of sleeping on bar stools. Hey. So how's about this? You keep letting me stay on that ship of yours, and I'll keep shooting at the things you point at. That's totally fine. Sounds good to me. That's fine, but try not to be a bad influence on the crew. Outstanding. All right. Lovely. Let's uh take. Oh, there were some pills here. Oh, there's a lot of stuff that I need to take. The dead aren't gonna use it. Let's get out of here. What is this? That's like a floodlight or something. <sighs> okay. Sweet. Out in the wilderness. All right. Ladies, gentlemen, citizens of the Empire, I hope you... Oh, God. <laughs> I hope you very much enjoyed, because I enjoyed having you. Um, when we return, we're going to see what else we can get into. Probably just more trouble on Byzantium. So I thank you so much for watching. If you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. On Twitch, drop me a follow if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time. Mm -hmm.